one thing is for certain, <laughs> they kind of fucked up in it. That's the feeling I'm getting. I'm getting that they know they fucked up in how they dealt with this cast media thing and they're trying to get ahead of it because now we've found out that Coffeezilla, the legend that is Coffeezilla is getting involved and he's going to make a little documentary video on this whole issue and kind of expose what's going on. But essentially, um, these last couple of days, Fear of One's video talking about Colin Thompson and the issues he had with cast media and how they stole money from him and the whole drama with Podcast One before they went public. I think the video last time I checked was on like 1.5 million views. And it's a clip from his podcast, a random clip from his podcast, ranting about this podcast, one thing, or cast media thing that, you know, Jim Cornette's been talking about, that Jason Ellis spoke about, we covered on the stream before. Theo's clip alone has already garnered 1.5 million views, which obviously shows, you know, the level of his popularity, but obviously shows that his fans give a shit about this stuff. And it obviously shows what's been happening in the background of people speaking about it. Other comedians of a podcast, this has definitely added people's intrigue and, in, you know, in this whole issue. And I think most of us who watch and listen to all these type of stuff, we're quite balls deep anyway, right? We like the inside baseball stuff. That's why you probably watch streams like mine or you check out podcasts and stuff or other sort of channels. You like the inside baseball stuff. So when someone inadvertently reveal some information that you didn't know about the business of it that kind of makes more sense to you that now kind of opens your eyes to like oh this is why these guys are like that and like that, like that. you're going to be intrigued so i'm not surprised that that video's got 1.5 million views because a lot of us probably had an understanding of how that business is run the podcast ad business thing but we didn't know exactly how it goes so now we have a good idea of how it goes or everything else that we thought about it's starting to make a lot more sense even when it comes to brendan and brian and how their show's kind of gone downhill but they still seem to be surviving and brendan's buying cars and houses and all this sort of stuff you're like oh this all makes sense now now they're explaining how the business actually works it all makes a lot of sense and it all kind of um makes you sort of realize what's actually going on behind the scenes anyway so fear of one thing happened everyone's speaking about it and i guess um because of some very good investigative journalism with the guys over on the fire and the kids subreddit, they all realized that Brendan had in fact taken that deal that Theo said gave him a weird vibe. Theo said when he got when he found out that he was getting swindled by the cast media, um, he basically confronted them. And in the confrontation, he found out that he was offered he, he was offered a deal, which would mean he would be get given a partial amount of money to make up for the money he lost. And the rest of the money would be given to him in stocks for this new company called Podcast One that Cast Media was going to get absorbed into and are going to go public soon. That was a deal. But of course, that sounds super shaky. He didn't take it. Well, some investigators over there or some homeless cats on the front of the kids subreddit, they realized that happened, went on Brendan, you know, Brendan Schaub's pods, all of them under Thick Boy, and they saw that every show under Thick Boy, whether it's Schaub show, The Fire and the Kid and everything else, they've all been listed under Podcast One, which means that Brendan most likely took that deal. That deal that Theo said, nah, this is bad news. I'm getting away from you guys. I want nothing to do with you. I'm going to go find a new partner to kind of do my podcast ad thing with. Brendan obviously took it, which is a dummy move because it was a fucking horrible deal. And it most likely, you know, if the stock isn't worth shit, what's the point of taking the stock? Which obviously that has transpired. But the thing that's really interesting in this is that they've obviously seen all the backlash that people have been talking about online with them taking the deal or maybe the negative reaction people have had with finding out about what's going on with cast media and how it makes them look that they went to get in front of it and kind of speak about it on the fire and a kid episode number 926 so i've got the times here it's around 341 and we're going to go through it because they kind of address it and speak about it and i get the feeling that they would never have spoken about this if Theo never said anything because Theo's one of the more high profile guys his video garnered already 1.5 million views they were kind of forced to speak about it because they need to clarify why they decided to jump on the podcast one deal when it obviously is a bad deal for them and if anything it's not standing in solidarity with your fellow comedians everyone got fucked over everyone's out of money and you decide to continue working with the company that fucked you over because you know you're not savvy enough to work out another deal or maybe the other theory is that they are so burnt out and they have such a bad reputation that no one else wants to work with them 
or that the numbers are so bad because I think that they even described in this explanation that the ads are done like years in advance so a lot of the deals that they were getting were for numbers that they had like three years ago so maybe with the numbers they have now they're not able to get the same level of deals they did in the past or maybe because the the podcast above was burst who knows either way it doesn't make them look good that they took the podcast one deal so they they're in a way they're just trying to defend themselves and then i guess because they got a call from coffeezilla they also want to make sure they're on the right side of history and make it make sense but i think when you hear them speak you will quickly realize that they're all full of shit especially keep your eye on brian callan brian callan's gonna do this thing which i've noticed that he does whenever he's lying or whenever he feels like he's backed into a corner he starts enunciating a really like that talking you know when he when he tried to deny the rape allegations i did not rape uh, you know he does all that shit so just keep an eye on, on brian see how twitchy he is and everything and you'll realize that he's lying and also notice how quiet brendan is in the entire thing he does interrupt from here and there but usually you know Brent, brendan's always kind of you know wants he wants to have his voice heard notice how quiet brendan is and notice how much brian callan over enunciates as he's trying to explain why they took the shitty shitty podcast one deal after the diabolical um, nature of how their cast media deal ended not for i don't know why you do this to yourself i know that's like hanging out i just do stand it's like hang, hanging out with elon musk I'm like god i want to get to mars i know you're right you in a comedy club i'm not Buddy, good at details huh we got money stored stolen from us and you had no clue till i told you there it, that, you want to run a comedy store you're right by the way let's take a minute to explain you want to address that i think we should explain what uh the the uh, get off for that segue come on dude good. i've been doing this a long time that was bro. good you just <laughs> caught it seamless, you just segue. Caught up, dude. seamless segue. professional black belt i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna tell everybody what well before you do the so we spoke with coffeezilla steven who i'm a big fan of and obviously theo vaughn uh announced on his youtube channel what exactly some of the issues we how can you be a big fan of coffeezilla but then also be a big fan of logan paul been having as far as what the podcast had. game goes yeah with what he's having but he also alluded when he's when he kept saying we it's it's me and theo right because when we had king the sting so theo said his piece and then, um, yeah, then Coffeezilla reached out. And yes. Because I'm behind the scenes. I, I, again, you, if you guys have been watching the show long enough, I don't like the drama stuff. I don't like, you know, I also don't think you guys are very interested in behind the scenes, the numbers. And so I was like. Well, I, I don't think. And it's, not, it's not drama, though, is it? It's a pretty big fraud situation in your industry. And the only reason why you guys do this is because of the money. Let's be honest. You guys make a lot of money, which makes sense. But you only keep doing this horrendous show that's already that's kind of fallen off of a cliff, unfortunately, from the times when I used to watch it. You're only doing it because it pays you really, really well. I would argue that most likely their podcasting still accounts for the majority of their monthly nut. The majority of their monthly income, I think, still comes from podcasts. Even though they're still touring comics, I think the majority of it, 60%, 70%, definitely comes from podcasts. And so it's a pretty big deal when one of your major um advertising partners podcast producer people whatever they're called is embroiled in a scandal where they've racked up millions and millions of fucking theft from other podcasts like that's a big deal you should talk about it actually you should be talking about this way more than talking about some random baseball player's dick or something that you always talk about right this should actually be what you're speaking about if you're being honest but hey what do i know then once theo was like we gotta i'm gonna do something here i was like do your thing player and then you know he went off and did his thing that's like doors open <laughs> i think what's did important is to stick to just the facts and with what it. happened to us i don't think it was very relevant to our listenership since it's a comedy podcast to get into what like the number oh now it's a comedy podcast bro you guys are never a comedy podcast you're only here talking about council culture talking about politics and stuff and race and things that you have no idea about but all of a sudden now because you've been embarrassed because you've it's been exposed of how like you know like just lacking in business acumen you guys have suddenly now it's a comedy podcast these guys are sensational aren't they it's a comedy podcast i'm not going to speak bro come on man just hold your hands up and say hey we were hasty we made a made, made a mistake we we're backed into a corner we had bills to pay we signed a deal now we know it's a bad deal but we're going to work it out as we're going to work it out don't try now and like jump skirt around it like 
the fear of one video this did a lot of damage a lot of these guys didn't want to speak about it because they probably signed podcast one deals but the fear of one deal did a lot of damage a uh, video sorry did a lot of damage and big up fear for being brave enough to step away and it, and it maybe helps who told me in the chat someone told me in the chat that fio has a lot of businesses he has like he owns like buildings and shit or whatever so that's probably why he was able to absorb the hit and you could be a little bit more clear-minded when he made his next step but either way i don't care how he did it big up fio for being smart and not taking that podcast one deal because that deal is not worth shit giving you stock options on a business that is already you know going downwards anyway makes no sense especially with all this bad um you know juju around them and shit it makes no sense but hey what do i know let's continue let's continue the amount of money we were that we are missing i don't think they care that was taken from us so uh over we we had been doing uh our our advertising agent was cast media we've had uh, several before by, that yes. but but in the past we four years four, or so three to four years more right four more than that four years a little over four <laughs> Uh, Colin so Thompson, who owns Cast, uh, was making us money. Not for only a long so, time. so remember, so Brian's gonna explain his side of the story, which which it relates to me and him. Then remember, I have you know the Shab Show at the time, King the Sting, which is now the Golden Hour, Cowboys Fight Campaign, Food Truck. So it's a big array. So hold on, no wonder this guy is able to live like I've always wondered, right? But I don't like to pocket watch because I think it's G-A-Y. I've always wondered, why does Brendan want to live, like, appear like he's a fucking, you know, like he's Joe Burrows or something, right? When he's like a average comedian, he's just a podcaster. Why does he want to appear? Obviously, the appearance is more so because of that failed dream of not being a footballer. But he kind of goes, he kind of feels like it's a bit much. But I think there's a hold on, hold on, hold on the podcast isn't doing that well. They don't get that many views and shit. They don't have many ads. But then I realized what he's saying now. He's saying that he had a separate deal from what he's saying, the sound of it. He had a separate deal with cast media for his own shows. Separate from the fire and the kid. So he was getting two envelopes. One for his show, one for the fire and the kid. Obviously, they're splitting it with fucking um, Callan. No wonder he's able to afford Ferraris and shit. It makes complete sense. As the story goes on, you were, you and, were, and, and you guys are familiar with, I'm sure other podcasts said they, you know, they they didn't receive money, and obviously Theo didn't receive money. No one got more screwed over than I did. Not even because it because uh, it crosses a lot. I'm the biggest victim out of other not shows, even. not just one. Yeah, and we'll tell you the numbers. So so what I find out from I'm the biggest I'm the biggest victim. Yeah, I went back into business with the people that fucked me over. From my accountant, your accountant, we not share anymore. the same accountants was um, that Fighter and the Kid was owed somewhere around $476,000. Then I find out that Thick Boy Productions overall is owed, and this is the number I was that was floated from our accountants before they'd done a real investigation, around $1.5, $1.6 million. I don't know if you guys, if that doesn't seem like a lot of money to you guys, that's a lot of money. And Why wouldn't it seem like a lot of money to us? What are you talking about? Is that like a weird attempt to seem uh, to appear like you're one of the guys or something? Like, of course, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Why wouldn't that be a lot of money? But also, funnily enough, does anybody think this is the real reason why BGO got fired? Okay, BGO and Brendan had a bit of a tete a tete. They obviously fell out. But does anybody think part, another part of the reason why Brendan and BGO fell out was because Brendan knew the business was going downwards they weren't getting the money they were meant to get he couldn't actually balance the books in terms of salary and he just you know created an issue with bgl to get rid of him and then he refused to pay him not because he was being a dick but because he didn't have the money that could explain it he genuinely didn't have the money so he made an issue out of nothing made him leave or fired him and that's what that's you know everything kind of transpired the way it did hmm that's not something I can just go whatever. So something's up. What is up? I'm not going to speculate on. But we knew that we were owed this money. And the way, the, the, so real, me, I'm not going to speculate. Okay, we, we know why you don't like speculation. Isn't it? We know why. A couple of allegations in it. <laughs> is, I know the way it would work was typically every three months we'd get a large chunk of money. Big up, and that's kind of how podcasting works. Podcast is net ninety days. Yeah. So you do a bunch of reads and then you get a check after nine, 90 days. 
Interesting. I did not know that. I thought it was always monthly checks or I thought it would be an invoice. I didn't know it was net 90 days, which invoice is technically net 90 days, but I've always thought it was like a monthly amount that you get in. So these guys must be clearing money, in it? They must be clearing money. All these ads that they get in and you get three months worth of ad reads money coming in. <sighs> Depending how they process it, but I'm assuming you might get, let's say, a minimum of two checks coming in every three months. God damn. But, and that was always the way it was until probably months went by when we were getting what we, what we call our minimum guarantee to keep the lights on pay employees. Eight so, months without those big lump sums. Yeah, I didn't, know, I didn't know that exactly, but it was a long time. That's why I have a new account. And after a while, the account- <laughs> I didn't know that. Why don't you know that, Brian? Say what you want about Brendan Schaub, but without Brendan, Brian would be relying on the generosity of his dad of his father to kind of keep his head above water this guy is hopeless bro hopeless how do you not know it's the only thing that actually makes you a lot of money in the whole i guess you know whatever he clears monthly you should be on this you should be like doing the business stuff and the shirts and the merch with brendan like you should be both sitting down looking over the books like you should know this i didn't know this like god almighty brian sounds go hold on we're owed, this is really accruing. This is like a tab that's like, I got, you, you owe some money. Here. After eight months. Yeah, Garcia life, you're right, actually. I take that back about Chin. Chin does get paid well. If they, what they're saying is true, then Chin definitely does get paid. If he doesn't get paid well, that makes him look even worse. But they make good money, even at the height. So Chin, Chin definitely does get paid well, which obviously makes sense based on what we've seen on his house tours and the amount of rent he pays and the amount of fucking gear he has in his, in his fucking crib. He, he lives well. He just, you know, he's a simple dude. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't have a drug addiction. He don't, he, I don't, no, he does create him, I think, for the most part, but he's not out here partying. He doesn't have a bunch of hoes and shit, so he keeps his life pretty lean, but he definitely gets paid a, a good amount. So I take back my he doesn't get paid well sort of stuff. I mean, imagine he does get paid well because they make a lot of money. Why wouldn't you pay that guy well? What's going on? So at the end of the day, I called Colin. And I'm just going to tell you what the conversation <laughs> was with Colin. So you have Colin's number, but you don't know the details of your own business. Makes sense. Essentially, I started talking to him and I stopped him and I said, Colin, it sounds like you got in over your skis. There was a lull in advertising revenue. Someone scammed you and then you're trying to make... Someone scams you, right? And But then you're trying to help them out as to why they scammed you. Give them an explanation on a plate. Did this phone call happen? Did it happen the way it said, he, said it happened? Is he just lying flat out? Or is he that much of an idiot? If someone, if someone scams me, I'm not trying to offer you explanations. I'm putting it on you. I'm grilling you. I'm asking you questions. I'm trying to get to the truth of the matter. Or by the end of the phone call, I'm threatening your life. I'm not gonna sit there giving you, oh, is it your was it your mom's birthday? Is it because your your cat died? Like, I'm not doing none of that shit. We're not boys anymore. It doesn't matter how close we are. You mess about with money and shit. That's actually that's actually proof that you don't respect me as a friend if you mess about with the money sort of stuff. Especially if you're not being honest about why you mess up, but you're offering information. Oh, is it because you got in over your skis? you and you started using our money at this point i thought it was just us that was for me uh you started using our money to pay your payroll and he said that's basically what happened <laughs> so i said and then there was talk of him selling his company to podcast one and i said where is that deal and i heard a couple of things and i, I hung up the phone i called you and i said we're not going to see our money and that sale is not going to go through it doesn't make any sense. But I just stopped listening. But I listened to Jocko and I went, well, good. Yeah, the dog. Then we got a dog with a <laughs> 1. bone. 1.6 million? Good. Yeah. And then we got a. <laughs> he took extreme ownership. 1.6. So, so this is going to be like. um, This is going to turn into that. What's that joke he was doing? H how big was that thing? Is that eight inches? What's the other thing he did? Um. I've got like a stack of Pringles, like I had a chip on my shoulder, like the size of a stack of Pringles. It's going to be one of those things. He's going to run this into the ground. He's going to run this into the ground. Good. Yes. So dog with a bone said, oh, hell no. And what I did at that point is I went on vacation. You did. This is the, if you ever went into, if you ever went into reason 
as to why Brian Callan is, you know, if you want an example of why people call Brian a cuck, this is it. This is the cuck tendencies that he has. He's the older guy in this partnership. He's been in the industry longer than Brendan, but he needed Brendan to save his life. If you remember the early episodes of The Fire and the Kid, when they were starting to blow up a bit, maybe after the first couple of hundred episodes, now I remember them always saying whenever Brendan used to like go to like Brian's house for like family dinners or just to hang out and shit, a lot of Brian's family would pull Brendan to one side and basically say, oh my God, thank you for helping Brian out because he was kind of lost. He didn't know where he was going. And this podcast has kind of allowed him to kind of get back in the limelight, put some money in his pocket, um, boost his profile because he basically got in a joker, even though it was a really small part. He got in it in part based because of what he did with his pod and that getting him notoriety and then getting him better gigs and then getting him, getting him get better auditions and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, all that to say, He's the one that's been in the scene, the industry the longest, but Brendan had to save him. And without Brendan, Brian would be honestly depending on the charity of his dad. He'd be living on his trust fund. He might even be living at home. That's how crazy. He might be living in one of the wings in his dad's fucking mansion and shit. That's how nuts it is. And he's actually not even like, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Bobby Lee. Brent Brian. He's got that bit of a infantile thing about him where he's, he's nearly 60 but he acts like he's 19 and he kind of thinks it's cute and it's fun. So, like, bro, you're a grown man. You should be on top of the business. If this is your, if this is the one thing that brings you all the money, you should know everything about it. You should be dotting all your I's and crossing all your T's personally. I think so. But he kind of enjoys this kind of like, I don't know if he thinks he's like a, if he's like a free creative or some sort of hippie or whatever, but he really does like he doesn't try to make any effort to change over the years he's been the same he comes late for podcasts um he doesn't do any research before shows that he's meant to be on um he does the least amount of effort and everything he's probably got the most amount of podcasts that he's never followed through on like if you think about like you know or shows that he just kind of abandoned a podcast from the days um mixed mental arts the brian callen show um, that one where he was driving around in his car interviewing comedians on loudspeaker, the bookless book club, like so many shows that he's done over the years that just kind of, he starts them and fail and just kind of drops them. He doesn't have any consistency, zero, zero, zero work ethnic, as Brendan would say, zero consistency. And he kind of enjoys the fact that he's a bit of a, he's got his head in the clouds type of thing, which obviously maybe is a rich boy type of thing because he's grown up rich his entire life. So maybe the pressure and the need to be involved in those things don't exist because you always know you have mummy and daddy to pull you out. But at 60, come on, bro. This whole thing is happening. They're missing out on money because he said, what, 400 grand for the fire and a kid, one point something million for Fick boy in terms of money that they hadn't, hadn't received yet from cast media. They're ringing everybody, they're emailing, they're stressed out because they've been without this money for eight months, I think they said. And then Brian decides to go, I think he went to Israel, if I'm not mistaken. Then he went to Israel. I think the same thing he went to Israel. He goes to Israel with his family on holiday. <laughs> I've cancelled holidays, vacations to parts of Europe, let alone, you know, Atlantic fucking flights. I've cancelled holidays to parts of Europe because I don't have a job or because I don't have any money because I want to focus on that thing I don't want to go away spend money I don't I don't necessarily have that I should be saving on other things you know what I mean like you're you're just worried about it but that's how you can tell he comes from you know he comes from money because normal people wouldn't do this if you're missing out on money you don't go on holiday <laughs> you barely go out you want to get that money sorted you want to figure out you know a solution to get it done first before you step outside but anyway let's continue what a wild guy. Look how proud he is of it as well. I went on holiday. Missing out on two million, but it's all good. I went on holiday. I had to go away for 10 days. Where did I go? I can't even remember. Went to Greece and whatever. I went to wherever it was. I, I didn't get, get to go on a vacation because I was dealing with this. Yeah, I said, I'm going to take my wife and my kid and I'm going to go away. And then you check in every now and Hey, uh, get our money. And I would get no. text going, hey, Brian, I'm in the trenches. You enjoy this. Good. But at the end of the day, what you guys have to realize is that that uh, Brennan spoke to, and I'll let you speak on this more, Brennan spoke to a number of agencies and the company that gave us the best deal when we were out this money was a company called Podcast One. Podcast One has been the agents of a lot of the people that we know. And Okay, so they're lying then. They're lying because Fia told us the truth. 
the truth is, Theo wasn't getting his money from Cast because they didn't have it or they stole it. Who knows where it's gone? Cast said, hey, we can't give you all the money, but we can give you, I think he said they'll give him partial amount, maybe half, maybe a quarter, who knows? And then the other half you'll get in stock so that when we then get absorbed by Podcast One and they go public and the stock shoot, shoots up and goes to the moon, you can sell that stock and you can get your money back which is insane, right? It's really insane. It's like lending your friend. It's like, you know, your friend wants to pay you back, but they want to pay you back in some shoes they're not wearing. Here's some shoes, sell these on StockX, and then you can get your money back that way. It's like, no, 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 no. Give me my fucking money, you know? <laughs> That's the deal we have. I give you podcasts, you give me money. Not I lend you money, you give me shoes to sell. That's what basically they told him to do, like, you know, which is insane. Fear told us the truth. But now he's saying his version of events is that, Brendan went out to look for deals and he stumbled across podcast one. Come on, brother. We know that's not the truth. And also think about this. Think about the timeline of events. Didn't I say recently the other day, I was like, why is Brendan buying uh, that Ram TRX truck? It's really nice, right? So I've seen a couple of other YouTube videos of people driving it. That Ram truck looks fucking beautiful. I, I would still prefer to get a F1, F1, Ford F-150. I just saw the new one um, debuted on YouTube. Um, they they fucking unveiled a new one. They unveiled a new electric one as well. It looks fucking beautiful. I'll still get the Ford F-150. Yeah, big up Yoshi um, before I'd get a Ram. But the Ram truck is beautiful. But I did wonder on one of the streams, I was saying to myself, or I said to you guys, why is Brendan buying a truck when he's owed money and he's got a kid coming? Like, what's what's going on? I don't understand it. But obviously someone in the chat said, yeah, but this is the same Brendan who bought a Ferrari allegedly when he got fired from Showtime. So he has a weird way of trying to like comfort himself when he's in you know stressful situations. So that made sense. But let's think about it this way. Let's imagine the whole leasing thing is partly true. Or let's say he bought it outright. Doesn't it really line up to the time that he shifted the business from cast to podcast one that suddenly he, he could afford a, or he wanted to now buy that pickup truck? That might be the reason why. Maybe when he signed to Podcast One, they gave them a little money on, they gave him a little, you know, a little money to front them. You know, here, thank you for joining us. Here's some money. And then the rest was tied up in stock. That might be the, that might be the reason why he suddenly, you know, started buying himself a truck. That might explain a lot. They've been very happy with them. Adam Carolla, Adam Dr. Carolla Drew. Dr. Drew, etc. They've been in business a long time. From what I can tell, have a very good reputation. Uh, and Prince they gave Harry. Us, they gave us, yeah, they gave us the best uh, deal. And we went with that because I was not in a position, neither talking. was Brennan, to say, oh, well, we'll just write that off. Oh, no, we were screwed. Now, in Whenever Brian does all that now and that, and he's like he's shouting, that's when he's lying. Whenever Brendan does that, I'm sorry, Brian, whenever he does that, well, like he's literally screaming and over enunciating like he's in uh, a fucking acting class or something, right? That's basically what he's doing. Like, bro, relax. Just talk normally. Chill. But he's obviously doing it to overcompensate because he knows he looks like a mug or they both look like mugs because they took the worst deal available to them because, you know, they're not the most business savvy people out there. In terms of what what Podcast One's deal was with Colin, we don't know. They weren't <laughs> going to disclose that. But what we did have in the contract was that Colin could have nothing to do with Fighter and the Kid. That's a lie. Who believes that to be true? Who believes that they could have some thing in their contract that will tell them that, that Colin Thompson couldn't be involved in their deals? How does that make any sense? If Podcast One are happy to have him on their company for whatever reason... How can they put into a contract that he's not going to talk to you or that you have no communication with you when he's, when he's the reason why you're there? <laughs> what? That makes no sense. I've never heard of that stipulation in a contract in my entire life. I'm going to sign with you, but I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't work like that. They may say, hey, we agree. We're just not going to let him do any of your deals, but you're not going to write it in, in a contract in black and white. That's not how the contracts work. From my experience, anyway, maybe it's different entertainment contracts, but I think that's a lie. Or any um, of my shows, or that's any in the of contract, your shows, and that's in the contract. Yeah, I'm, from, I met with everybody. From there, no, you didn't. then from there, from my perspective, I'm speaking for me. I started to see that this cast debacle was more systemic, and that we weren't the only podcast who. So after your phone call, where you you got the inkling, because he said after the phone call, he got the feeling like that cast, what that podcast one deal he was going to do, because you phoned Colin Thompson. 
he got a feeling that that deal he had in line was never going to happen. The money basically got got. We got got by this guy. He scammed us. How then could you have that gut feeling, but then also not have make the logical jump and think, hold on, how many other people have he scammed? It never went that far. You just left it like that. Again, so many lies in this in this clip. Who had taken these losses, and so now that is an ongoing thing that I will allow people <laughs> like so Coffeezilla yeah, to yeah. unfold, to look at. Who we spec- spoke to. to we spec- spoke to Coffeezilla yes, on Friday. They can Friday. speculate on that all they want. Coffeezilla has spooked them. And also listen to this part. Does this, does this part to you sound like Brian Callan is threatening Coffeezilla? Because it sounds like that to me. Coffeezilla spooked these guys really a lot because he came into it like a journalist, wanted to get their point of view and what happened, get their side of the story. Big up the India dude. Appreciate you, brother. The title is clickbait, right? No way Brian is going to go. My dad can beat up your dad like we did in kindergarten. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's clickbait. It's clickbait. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, no. It's, it's the clickest of all clickbaits, my friend. But yeah, that's hilarious. My dad can beat up your dad. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, honestly, these guys are so scared of Coffeezilla. And I don't blame them. Because once he lays this out from an outsider's perspective, without much knowledge on these guys, without much knowledge on the Papaverse, without much knowledge on the Jerry Extended Universe, he's going to see that these guys are the dummies. They're not going to come out of that looking good. They're going to come out of it looking like like yes men, like cucks, um, you know, like they got in their head in the sand, all because they couldn't bother to look for another deal, or because their name has been sullied so much that they couldn't get another good deal, or maybe just because of the numbers. But the lies that they, they they said, oh, I looked for, I looked, I looked to everybody. No, you didn't, bro. We already heard what Theo said. Theo already gave us the whole lay of what happened. So you probably got offered the same deal that Theo got offered. Now all of a sudden you did everybody. No, you didn't. It's a lie. Let's continue though. But don't you think this bit sounds like a threat to Coffeezilla? It sounds a bit like a threat, like a veiled threat. Also, it could be a threat, or it could be, or as Ben would say, also, or it also it could be. Brian doing that thing where because he got accused of rape and shit, he's really te- tetchy about accusations. I watched this clip earlier actually of Red Band, uh, sorry Red Band, um, Red Bar. And it's going through a clip of Brian Callan and Sam Tripley having an argument, and they're arguing about something. I forgot what they're arguing about, but Brian gets really like it touches a nerve when Sam Tripley is like speculating on shit because that's what fucking you know conspiracy theory shit is, right? You're just talking out of your ass. And it seems to really touch a nerve with Brian. So I think Brian, ever since those accusations, has he's he's ultra sensitive now about people just speaking about stuff and hypothesizing and pontificating and just thinking aloud. He doesn't like that sort of shit or making like logic jumps with the information that they have available or coming to their own conclusion. He doesn't like that. He was all about facts. He's all about what happened and blah, 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 blah. I think that's what that I think this is what's happening now with Brian. He's really, 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 really scared and almost threatening Coffeezilla. But let me tell you what happens Saturday. in situations like that, like this. If something like this happens, you better be very careful go. about how you speak about it on public <laughs> platforms. Very careful. <laughs> and you better stick to just the facts. And I've learned the hard way over the past twelve years. years to say only what I know for sure. Yeah, I don't know. And to keep my mouth shut about everything else. But going forward, um, I think right now we're in a good place. Uh, yeah. See, see, he's doing that voice thing. Did I tell you about that voice thing? He's doing that fucking voice thing that he does when he's nervous and shit. He did exactly the same thing when he got accused of rape and he tried to defend himself. Do you remember that video? I think he's standing somewhere in a house and his eyes look like, you know, they've just been blackened over. He looks really sunken, cheeks and shit. He looks very stressed. Um, and he's like, I did not rape anybody. I mean, he's like over Nancy and everything. He's not blinking. He looks kind of scary. Um, but he's obviously super nervous um, because, you know, he feels like everything's going to get taken away from him. And he's in the same place right now. Like, yeah, you better be very careful. Right. This little this little man in this big chair is <laughs> like threatening people. <laughs> but yeah, let's hear Brendan Schaub's side of things. I, one of the reasons why I don't talk about it, it's also talking about it doesn't oh, do so too much. It might help out the maybe people that can't talk about it. I guess that was Theo's thing behind it. That's not. But what do you, <laughs> I love this guy. It might help out people that can't talk about it. I guess the people that need our help. Like why do I help them? 
<laughs> but to me, it's it. I go good to quote Jocko. Good. No, we now know, you we get know. to work. It it's your my issues aren't your guys' issues. Oh I gotta my figure out. god, the worst type of colleague in it. The worst type of colleague. You're at work. Maybe one of you hasn't been paid, or let's say no. Let's say every like yes, say you all haven't been paid, but then one of you does get paid. And he then stops complaining. He's now suddenly the manager's best friend because he got his money. Instead of selling in solidarity with all everyone did they get paid and doing whatever action that they're doing in order to kind of push the payment through. He's that kind of guy at work. He's definitely that kind of guy. I got paid. I got sorted out. So you guys have sorted your own thing. It's like, no, 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 no. We all got promised a weekend off. Why are we coming in for the weekend and you're not? Stand in solidarity with us. No, no, no. I got my weekend off. I mean, it's not my business. Oh, okay. Then when it happens to you, you're going to then come back to us later on because it ne inevitably always does. The person that sucks up to the manager, inevitably they always come back to the fucking employees because if a manager's going to fuck over employees, they're going to fuck you over too. Even if you're the manager's pet, you're eventually going to get fucked over. That's just how it is. Yeah, he's one of those kind of guys. I got my shit so you guys can stay over there. So, oh, now, now I definitely have a feeling that Podcast One, they definitely gave him a bit of money before he has a signing on bonus, which is why he didn't say nothing. That's my. That's another theory I've just thought of just now, I think. Why he never said nothing was because of that. And then when Theo said something, he was kind of forced to because it made him look bad. This guy, man. <laughs> so fucking dumb. Oh, this is so unnecessary, the, the heat they're going to bring on themselves. But again, they don't check social media, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and he's meant to be a big fan of Coffeezilla, which I don't believe. But hey, what can you do? Big up that Indian dude. Appreciate it, Super Chat, brother kind of wild guys like Theo Von don't have employees who can headhunt advertisers for them <laughs> and ads that can be effective for their demo yeah um you know what um i'm saying how do you say this from my point of view right because i know already like i get some offers i've heard already before they're beauty shit for like jewelry and wristbands and all this sort of nonsense right or fake traders but maybe the input like i think maybe the bins is just too much and these guys for instance like feels busy as well right he's doing he's he's touring um he's writing new material he's doing his podcast he's he's interviewing on loads of different shows and shit it's a lot to do so maybe they don't want to do that sort of stuff so if you can pay somebody to do it for you fair enough the only other thing that's issue for it is i heard where did i hear it on was it a podcast someone no i think it might be on podcast cringe or comedy cringe he said something like comedy cast media and those kind of places they take quite a big amount of a cut allegedly so let's say it's like 40 or 60 percent let's say it's 40 percent. that's still a lot so if that was me i would rather just hire some kid on fucking fiverr or something or just one of your fans to just be the person who just replies to all the inbound um requests to advertise on your pod then if you run out of those then you hire somebody specifically like a sales guy to go and get some outbound stuff for you but it's it would still be far less money than you have to pay for an all-in person but i think the reason why they do that all-in thing from what i understand is that they also handle the audio side of things they upload you know because obviously audio is king they upload it onto whatever they upload it to kind of share it and distribute it they may do like thumbnails all this sort of stuff so I think that's why they do it because they don't have the time to do it themselves or they don't have the wherewithal to do it themselves. But I think if that was me and the amount of money, because imagine, right, these guys say they owed 1.5 million on Thick Boy and 400,000 on The Fire and the Kid. Think about how much that would be if they didn't have to cut anybody in. That's a lot of money, you know? And if that money is that much, I think it's worth it to learn Photoshop, <laughs> you know? I think it's worth it to sit down on your Gmail and write, you know reply back to some fucking inbound request for ads i think a million is worth to fucking sit down and write a fucking template a pitch template so you can send that to advertisers i think it's worth it but again we all know these podcasters guys these comedian guys they like to talk about hard work and hustling but they're probably one of the most laziest groups of people maybe they're the laziest people in the entertainment industry they might be you know in terms of like work work compared to like their income they're very lazy. Like, if you think about it, some of these guys work like five hours a week, if that, recording shows. They don't edit nothing. They don't do thumbnails. They don't write the fucking descriptions. 
all the titles they don't do the clips they just sit and record and go home like <laughs> they have so much time to do shit but they don't want to do it they're so lazy and i love it because their laziness is what has made them get scammed so easily by these guys because the scams not that sophisticated he just took the money from the ads and then cut himself some off and then gave them a little bit and then over time he started to take all of it you know that's all he did nothing crazy he didn't hack their bank accounts he didn't impersonate them zero he just took the money from the advertisers probably lied about what they gave him and then sent them off of whatever they sent them and because it was always coming in they didn't pay attention to it and as soon as it stopped coming in suddenly they start checking the books by that time it's too late i'm already in fucking sardinia mate to keep these lights on otherwise there's no show yes also and also, so you call me a bulldog we also don't know what other people's issues are no i don't know the nitty-gritty why don't you ask then brian why don't you ask them look how he's closing his eyes he's even closing his eyes as you're speaking i don't know i don't know i didn't see i didn't see i didn't see it they want to be oblivious to the scam so badly because if they try to pay attention to it that will be work for them do you get it do you understand that that's why they don't want to pay attention to it they don't want to pay attention to it. They don't want to ask any questions because asking questions would mean getting involved, which would mean more work for you, which you don't want to do. I knew I don't know anything about your big up wingus dingus. Buying dip scoob is funnier than Joe Rogan. No contest B. Bean uh, bean dip what? Bean dip shorb. Funnier than Rogan. No contest B. Bean dip. As in Brendan. Nah, no way. I know some of you guys don't like Rogan's comedy, but Rogan's far better comedian stand up than, than Brendan. It's not even fucking close. Not even close. Out that. I didn't even know how much Theo was owed. Although uh, Brendan is a better comedian than Matt Rife, and I'll fucking die on that hill. Brendan is a better stand up comedian than Matt Rife, and I would die on that hill. Um, I, I didn't know. Well, Theo hadn't been with the company, I guess, for about a no, year. No, he, he left another one. So, so all I know to, is. To Theo's card, though, he, he called it from from day one he just he wasn't a fan of cast from day one ah oh, hey, josie's telling me now az this is a basic body language 101 he's got his eyes closed trying to say he knows nothing or he's being deceitful ah oh, yeah true again brilliant point josie brilliant brilliant point i love it. what are you saying here about theo not liking cast from the beginning that's why i hate <laughs> these guys oh theo really fucked them over isn't it again big up to find the kids subreddit guys some someone said already like someone said wow i think theo's video is gonna cause a lot of these guys issues because he's saying this knowing that some of his friends are probably taking a deal so they're all right theo's video caused them a lot of issues because it definitely you know put them on the wrong side of history painted them as like it made them look like um what's that thing they call them the, what's the thing they call the people in um uh now it's happening with the strikes in in fucking hollywood what are they called again if you stop picketing and you go back to work scab in it is it a scab that's what's making them look like you know what i mean they put down their fucking wooden planks and their boards and shit they became scabs because they want to you know, scab yeah that's, that's what basically brendan and brian are looking like <laughs> oh. well theo hadn't been with the company i guess for about a no year. he he left another one so so all i know to, is to theo's card though he, he called it from from day one he just he wasn't a fan of cast from day one okay you got that right yeah, yeah. I don't know. This but stuff, yeah, this uh, stuff. so we that, got that's, to work. That's and the uh, that's we landed the on our feet. Thanks God. That's what happened, as far as we are concerned. And I am sure more details will emerge. Coffeezilla is going to release his. Uh, who knows? But we smoked Coffeezilla, and then if he's on the case, he'll he'll he's yeah. He's a good. Stephen's a great dude. And then yeah, we I met with it. You <laughs> we've been in the business so long. I met with. I flew to Texas. I flew everywhere to meet with all these podcast uh, advertisers. Speak to them on the phone. Me and my manager Lex. Again, you think I'm a bulldog? You also fainted I got, from I got, stress. I got a bigger. Yeah, I did. Didn't you? Have get, a, yeah, I did. Didn't you have a fainting spell or this? You attack. had to sit down. I have a bigger bulldog. So Brian, Brendan allegedly fainted. Don't miss that fucking detail. This is make it look at Brian la laughing because he would never faint because money is no issue, isn't it? Father can always fucking cover the nut. But I, I kept, I kept telling you guys that Brendan's. He might make a lot monthly, but his monthly spend must be insane. Think about Brent Brendan's monthly spend. He's probably covering the mortgage on his mother-in-law's house that he had to buy because, you know, as a fucking forgiveness gift for his cheating or whatever people say he did. The money that he has to give his wife to buy Birkins and Gucci slippers and shit. 
the fucking fees for his kids' private schools. Kids' school, kids' designer stuff isn't cheap, from what I know of, you know, of my friends who buy their kids, like, fancy Supreme and Nike stuff. Like, kids' stuff is super expensive. His own um, vices, his cars, his trainers, like, Brendan's monthly spend is a lot. So when cars stopped paying him, he was probably sweating hard because, you know, like, a lot's on the line, you know? A lot is on the line. Brian, no issues. Closes his eyes, goes to Greece, goes to fucking Israel, gets a tan, <laughs> comes back. <laughs> because father's going to cover it. Big up father. Big up fucking Papa Callan, man. He fucking raised the guy that's now nearly 60 and has no interest in getting his life together. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Big up uh, chocolate drop. Appreciate you, brother. Am I tripping, or did Hot Chip producer choose Brenda over Theo? Or did Theo ditch him too? These dudes are clowns, BTW. Am I tripping, or did Hot... Who's Hot Chip producer? Is that the guy... Is it the white guy who, who could try to give uh, Theo a chip? No, he, he's still there. He does um he does Golden Hour. He's still there. I forgot his name. Um, He's like a degenerate gambler guy. The one who looks like he lives in an ashtray. He looks like he doesn't shower. Um, That guy. He kind of looks like he's got... He's got cans of fucking Paps Blue Ribbon underneath his bed. That type of dude. Or he probably pisses in cans. You know that kind of guy that pisses it, that's got piss bottles all over their bed and shit? Just, just, if you're going to piss in a bottle, fair, but just dump it in the loo. Why do you have to piss in a bottle and leave it next to your bed? I never understood that whole thing. I understand pissing in a bottle. I get not being bothered to go to the toilet. Fair enough. We all can be lazy, fat shits. But if you're going to piss in a bottle, at least go and empty it. <laughs> <laughs> you know just have all these fucking urns these piss urns on the floor like crazy blogging well, lex mcmahon behind me so you, well, you gotta this, deal with me and lex good luck lex mcmahon is a all marine chest. was a marine and all is chest. a marine and is uh in anyway now now they go into what they know best and sucking off another man's anatomy and shit and talking about his frame and whatnot but in the end what you can tell from this from the frantic nature of what of which brian brian is talking the fact that Brenda didn't interrupt as much as he usually interrupts. The fact that he tried to dismiss or diminish the stuff that Theo said. Tried to make it seem like they were the heroes in his story. Trying to over-explain. It looks like they realized that they did a bad move and it's being exposed now. They didn't want it to be exposed. Now it is. They tried to make it seem like, oh, we couldn't leave a one million. No one's saying to you, you could walk away from being scammed from a million. It just doesn't make any sense why you would move to the company. You know, it like why would you go and do another deal with a guy that scammed you that's, that's the thing that doesn't make any sense and obviously the reason why he did it is because you have no other options which you should be just fair enough and just say hey we're in a bad place right now or whatever we don't have any options this is what we got at the moment it's probably not going to work out well but this is the only thing we could take at the moment or whatever just explain it that way don't try and paint another narrative to make you look like the heroes or the good guys in this story or whatever you're clearly not and um yeah most likely it's going to be exposed in a coffeezilla documentary or video coming out i think it's coming out tomorrow on the patreon i think i'm about to sign up to a patreon actually i think he's going to release it on his patreon if i'm not mistaken let me double let me double check i'm pretty sure he said is it coffeezilla right patreon let me see i'm pretty sure he said it's going to come out on his patreon on wednesday or something like that so i'm looking forward to checking that out yeah there he goes yeah there you see he's got his there but um, I'm pretty sure he said that. Where is it? I think I've got it here somewhere, haven't I? Yeah, there we go. He says it's gonna come out. I think it's. I think that's like six p.m. my time. So he says gonna. He said he confronted Colin Thompson, um, going public tomorrow at twelve p.m. CST. So I'll probably do a live reaction to that um, tomorrow as well. So if you're around, come and hang out with the kid, and we'll talk about um, Coffeezilla's interview with Colin Thompson because I want to see. Wild one, but yeah, I'm gonna definitely go and check out Co Coffeezilla's Patreon and join that because I want to see what the deal is because this is looking very, very shaky for the fucking Fire and the Kid boys. Um, yeah, exactly. See, everyone's saying the popcorn already, people are commenting it down below. Yeah, people are excited, so it should be a good one. And his Patreon, how much is it to join? Okay, cool. He's got he's got a good basic one that's 440, sorry, 450, and that's it. Okay, wow, he's got one level only. Big up fucking Coffeezilla. What a G. I've got fucking five. Well, I think one is like one dollar or something like that, right? Um, but yeah. Okay, cool. Big up him, man. He's only got one level of a, of a sub. I'm definitely down. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join that as well and do a little analysis on the thing when he ends up doing it. But it should be a good one because 
it's gonna it's looking bad for Brendan and Brian. They're probably not gonna look the best in this video, but hey. Or maybe you won't cover them at all. Maybe you spoke to them and think they're fucking redax. I don't know. Uh but yeah, big up drone adventures in the chat. Big up you. Big up Uncle Podcast. Appreciate you, brother. Uh 